morning, children. Uh, in our previous classes, we have completed about water dispute. So today we'll be moving towards the foundation of Indian democracy. Okay, on that class also, uh, at least two paragraphs I'd already explained you, but also let me just revise it. Okay, see, finally, we got independence in the year 1947. Fi now, the power to administer the affairs of our own country came into the hand of the people of India. Okay, so at that time also I told you there was a number of problems which was been faced. Okay, uh, like efficient leadership were needed. The other important problems which came in front of our country was to frame the democratic constitution, adult suffrage, establishment of a secular country, development of agriculture and education, establishment of public administration and others. But apart from everything, the leaders now they took up to solve the problem of framing the constitution, which I had already explained to you in the previous class. So for the formation of uh, for the framing of the Indian constitution, various committees were been established. Okay, various committees were been formed. Out of that committee, one committee was there, which is known as a special committee. Now, let's see what was the task of that special committee. The task of that special committee was to chalk out the plan of the constitution. It was the responsible. It was the responsibility of the special committee that now they had to make a plan for the constitution. Okay, what, how? they are going to make the constitution or to frame the constitution and one of our great leaders B.R. Ambedkar, Bhimrao Ambedkar were appointed as the head of this committee. Thereafter a lot of discussions were there, okay, were been made, a lot of confusion came across, okay, do's and don'ts, this all thing, okay, but finally after all this toil and turmoil, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar was able to prepare a manuscript or a draft of the constitution. But remember, this manuscript was published first to know the views of the people. What the people of our country has to say about this manuscript of the constitution. After, no, after uh, publishing it, it was that uh, now they wanted to know the views of the people. After knowing the views of the people, more than 200, 2000, sorry, more than 2000 amendments were been made. See, try to understand. After uh, the views and ideas which was been given by the people of India, uh, about 2,000 amendments were been made in the constitution and finally the constitu constitution came into force on 26th of January 1950. And according to this constitution, finally India became a sovereign, democratic and republic country. That is the reason why we celebrate 26th January as the Republic Day. Okay, about the significance of 26 January, I'd already explained to you in the previous classes. Okay, now, let us move towards to the first general election, very important, my dear children. The first general election when it was been held in the year 1952. Okay, let's see what happened, how many total political parties were there, okay, who, ro who ro stood up in this election and who got the victory. We will be learning about that. Okay. Jawaharlal Nehru was the first Prime Minister of Indian, Independent India. You know very well. Which, uh, continuously, I am telling you all. Okay. The first Prime Minister of Independent India was Jawaharlal Nehru. In 1951 and 52, the first general election took place in accordance with the new constitution. According to the new constitution, according to the new constitution in the year 1951 to 52. Okay. The first, the first general election was held. First general election was been held and this election was been held according to the new constitution that was been adopted. This election was a great success. Say. Now the election, uh, it was completed and it was a great success okay, of the Indian leaders who had full faith in democracy. Whoever, okay, whoever, whichever Indian leaders, they had a full faith in democracy. Yes, our country, India, should be a democratic country. Okay, so after the election, after the election, it was a great success for the Indian leaders who had a complete trust, a complete faith in democracy. And see, this was a great challenge to the Indian leaders. So, the first election, to held the first election, especially in a democratic way, that was a great challenge to the Indian leaders. See, it was not an easy task. See, got it? You have to look up to, as you know, India is a very large country and a lot and lots of illiterate population were there. Okay, so it was not an easy task 
to the Indian leaders. But also they gave a first try. They gave a first try to held the election in the year 1951 to 52 in the democratic way. And that was a great success. Because you know where I told you India is a so huge country. Okay. You can find the people belonging to the different religion, different faith, okay, different communities living in India. And on top of that, during that time, India, India had a large illiterate population, uneducated population. And it's not easy tax to convince the uneducated people, you know very well. So Nehru's decision was to grant voting rights to all adults. See, the first decision, try to make it clear. Okay, be clear out here. The first decision, what the decision made by Nehru was to grant the voting rights to all adults. All adults, okay, will be granted the right to vote. And the results of the election proved his full faith in democracy. And whatever the result came of that election, okay, it proved that yes, the country had a full faith in democracy. The results of the triumph of Indian democratic system, yes, now, the result was been declared. That result clearly proved, yes, that was a victory of the Indian democratic system. Yes, now finally, the Indian democratic system had won. In these elections, 14 national parties, try to understand, in this general election, 14 national parties, 14 national parties, 53 53 regional parties, 53 regional parties, okay, and a number of independent candidates and a plenty of independent candidates, okay, contested in 489 Lok Sabha, okay, how many Lok Sabha was there? So it for the Lok Sabha was 489 Lok Sabha and 3,283 3, state assembly seats. So during that time, please note it down, my dear children, 489. Lok Sabha seats were there and 3,283 state assembly seats were there. So in this one, I told you 14 regional, sorry, 14 national party were there, 53 regional parties were there and a number of independent uh, candidates that contested in this Lok Sabha election as well as uh, state assembly election. In Lok Sabha election, there were 489 seats and in state assembly, there were 3,283 seats. 98 Lok Sabha and 669 assembly seats were reserved for scheduled caste and tribe C. Out of this, out of this, try to understand, 98 Lok Sabha and uh, 669 uh, state assembly, okay, assembly seat. This seats. These seats were being reserved for SC and STs. SC and SC means scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. The picture is clear. In this general election, which took place between 1952, 51 to 52, Jawaharlal Nehru uh, wanted to grant a voting rights to all adult suffrages, all adults. And obviously, yes, the result clearly proved that, yes, the country had a full faith in democracy. The result get a, gave a great victory to the Indian democratic system. And in this election, 14 national parties, 53 regional parties, and number of independent candidates contested in 489 Lok Sabha seats and 3,283 state assembly seats. But out of these 489 Lok Sabha seats, 98 Lok Sabha seats were been reserved for civil castes and civil tribes. And out of 3,283 state assembly seats, 669 seats were been reserved for civil caste and civil tribes. Picture clear? Okay. Now, let's see the preparation process. Now we are moving towards to the preparation. How the preparation was been done for this general election. It was a great task for the Indian Election Commission and the administration. So it was not an easy walk. It was not a very simple walk, okay, to start the process for this election because the election was been held in for the first time, okay, according to the new constitution. And it was a great task for the Election Commission. Indian Election Commissioner, Commission as well as the administration. Su Kumar Sen. Please note down the name. Su Kumar Sen. First Chief Election Commission of Independent India. First Chief Election 
Commissioner, Commissioner of Independent India. Dear children, please note down the name of Sukumar Sen, who was the first chief election commissioner for independent India. Handle the whole situation. It, this was the person who completely took over the responsibility of all, all the situation with very care and caution. He was very, he, he handled in a very carefully way. Okay. So that, okay, certain type of uh, uh, other things might not take place. Okay. Got it. He was very careful. Okay, very cautious. He handled the whole situation. 25 lakh ballot boxes. Try to understand the arrangement made for this election. 25 lakh ballot boxes and 62 crore ballot papers. See, this was this was been this amount of ballot box and ballot papers were being used in this election. Now, in today's time, okay, like we use EVM, electronic voting machines are there. In today's time, okay, but in those days, okay, I hope so. Some of the uh, some of the children, you might be you might not be seeing this uh, ballot papers costumes or what type of it is, okay. So I'll just uh, tell you, okay. In today's time, it's very simple. We use EVM, electronic voting voting machine. Now, ballot boxes. Ballot boxes means are the box, okay, where uh, the ballot papers have been kept. Is that clear? Later on, the counting will be done. Okay. In ballot papers, see, ballot paper means uh, this sort of papers would be there, okay, and the column would be there. This way, okay. Now, contestant number one, his symbols will be here, and the name will be here. Contestant number two, whatever his symbol is there, his name. Is it clear? So whatever, for example, I have to cast a vote. Okay, I want to cast the vote, especially in this uh, symbol number two. So a, a handle with the stamp would be there. Okay, just you have to stamp it out here. Is it clear? So that is ballot paper. So it has been said that during that election, 25 ballot boxes and 20, 62 crores ballot papers were being used. For every 1,000 voters, there were one polling booth. Now polling booth means it's a small sort of room. You go in a place where you enter inside that place and you will cast your vote. That is known as polling booth. Is that clear? For every 1,000 voters, one polling booth was there. Total 2,24,000 polling booths were been set up. See, during this time, total 2,24,000 uh, polling booths were been set up. So try to understand. Okay. Got it. So for every 1,000 voters, one polling booth was there. For every 1,000 voters, one polling booth was there and total 2,24,000 polling booth were being set up. The entire election post process was manned by 10 lakh governor officials. See, to just look after this total election, to the total entire election process, 10 lakh government officials were being appointed. 10 lakh government officials were being employed. They were the one, it was the responsibility to take the entire process of this election. Is it clear? So this was how the preparation was being done for this election. Okay. Thereafter, the election took place. After the election, you know very well, we'll get the result. Isn't it? Yes or no? Hmm? So let's see what was the result of this first general elections. Results of the first general election. Let's see. Okay. The first general election created a lot of excitement in the country, obviously, for the first time. Okay, for the first time, the people are getting the right to vote. So there was a great excitement. Because you know, whenever you get a new things, okay, whenever the new things comes to you all, obviously you people get very excited, isn't it? Yes or no? Huh? You want to do that one because that is a new for you. So because we have been ruled by the British for more than 200 years, okay, got it? We didn't have, during that time when the British had ruled India, we didn't have the voting rights, okay? Got it? We have been highly discriminated by the British, okay? We have been treated as inferior, to the white people, we were being considered as a black. It was the British who used to say that, yes, the Indians, the Indians are not able to rule themselves. 
So this sort of things were there. But finally, when we got independent, and now yes, the first general election, we are we are voting. Okay, we have got the voting rights. So obviously, obviously, there will be a great excitement in the country. In the first election, Congress fared very well. Okay, as you know very well, from the very uh, early time, we have been knowing about this political party named that Congress, who had done a lot to free our country from the hand of British. Obviously, the people of India had not forgotten, okay, their, uh, their good deeds towards to the country. So that is the reason why in the first election, Congress fared very well. They did very well. It has been said that, see, Congress won... 75% of Lok Sabha seats and 68.5% of assembly seat, state assembly seat. See, during this election, Congress did very well. Congress swept the poll. 75% of the Lok Sabha seat, 75% of the Lok Sabha seat were been won by the Congress and 68.5% of state assembly seats were been won by the Congress. It had absolute majority in most of the states. See, in most of the states, Congress got absolute majority, excluding leaving away Madras, Travancore, Cochin, Odisha, Pepsu, that is Patiala and Eastern Punjab States Union. Living apart from the states, in other states, let's say, Congress got absolute majority. They were the one to form the government in most of the states. Okay, Congress made alliance with smaller parties and independent candidates and formed governments in some of the states. And in some of the con uh, in some of the states, okay, uh, Congress uh, with allies with the smaller parties or by ally with the independent candidate, they formed the government. We call that sort of government as a coalition form of government. Is it clear? Got it? Okay. Apart from the con Congress, okay, this was the result of the Congress. I told you Congress did very well in the election. Apart from Congress, Communist Party. Communist Party of India, CPI we call it, Communist Party of India and its allies. Its allies means its parties, okay? The next largest party. First largest party, Congress. Second largest party, CPI and its allies. It has been said that they won uh, 23 Lok Sabha and 147 assembly seats. First, I told you the, the poll was been swept away by Congress. Congress won about 75% of Lok Sabha seats, 685 of assembly seats. Second to Congress was Communist Party, Con Communist Party of India and its allies, okay, its partners. 23 Lok Sabha seats they got and in assembly seats they won 147 seats, something around they received 4.6 votes. The performance of rightist parties were not good. See, so, yeah, other parties, okay, their performance were not so, not so good. John Song, Hindu Mahasabha, Ra, Ram Raja Parishad won only 10 Lok Sabha seats, receiving only 6% of the total votes poll. See, out of the total votes poll, only 6% they got. They won only 10 Lok Sabha seats. The rightist party, we call it. Okay, John Song, Hindu Mahasabha, and Ram Raja Parishad, they won only 10 Lok Sabha seats, and they received only 6% of the total votes. Apart from these parties, former royals and big landlords did well in some parts of the country. See, apart from this party, some royal families were there. Some big landlords were there who also had contested the election. They really did well uh, in some parts of the country. So the picture was very much clear. The result of the first general election, Congress completely swept the poll, you can say it. Okay, the, the, the largest party was a Congress who won something around 75% of the Lok Sabha seats and 68.5% of the assembly seats. Okay. Let's see now the impact of the results. Now we'll move towards to the impact of the result. Now I hope so. The result is very much clear. Okay. The preparation process, I made it very much clear. Now the result also is very much clear. Now let's see what is the impact impact of the elections election it took place in 1951 to 52 i told you let's see what was the impact of this election though enjoyed absolute power in central instead the congress leaders respected dom democratic democratic norms and actively encouraged the development of democratic ideas in the country okay it's very much clear absolute power in the center as well in the state try to understand in the center as well as in the state the congress uh, congress they come Completely had an absolute power, but also 
the leaders of the Congress, they really respected the democratic norms and actively encouraged everyone to develop the democratic ideas in the country. We will not go against the democracy because democracy means it's for the people, by the people, of the people. We have been put up into this post, okay, in, the, in this post by the people itself only. So we have to look for the welfare of the people and the government which has been formed, either it at the center or the state, that completely belongs to the people. So they really encourage and the development of the democratic ideas. Opposition leaders took part in Lok Sabha debates and made constructive, constructive criticism of the government policy. Okay, opposition leaders were there. Okay, in Lok Sabha, they obviously what happens, you know very well. In Lok Sabha, okay, lots of debates will be gone, a lot of discussions will be made. Okay, and the opposition, what is what is the task of opposition party? The task of opposition party is to oppose. They never go with the policies of the government. Whatever the policy will be introduced by the government, the opposition party will always oppose it. Okay, because they wanted to completely dissolve that government. So similarly, from that very, very time only, okay, the opposition party played a very important role in the Lok Sabha, having a great debating and especially always criticizing the policies of the government. In India, the press enjoy full freedom in all respect. In all field, press enjoyed full freedom. Okay, got it? There was no any bar, especially for the press. The political parties, the trade unions, and all other organizations full, enjoy full freedom to voice their protest. Okay, even other political parties, see, yeah, the Congress, they had, they had completely had an absolute power in the center as well as state. Okay, they could have done the policy like monopoly, dictatorship, but they didn't. But they did not do that. They encouraged the democratic ideas to be developed in the country. So that is the reason why all the political parties, all the trade unions, all the organizations, they even had a full freedom to voice their protest. If they feel it so, yes, the government policy, the, whatever the policy has been introduced by the government, it is completely against the nation, then these political parties, other political parties, the trade unions, other organizations had got a full right to go protest against that policy introduced by the government. Let's see. The leaders like Dr. Sham Prashad Mukherjee, Ram Mohan, Manohar Lohia, J.B. Kripalani, A.P. Gopalan, Minu Masani, Bhupesh Gupta and other important leaders exercised a lot of influence on the activities of the central government. See, the activities of central government, the activities of the central government during that time was fully controlled by these leaders, namely Dr. Sham Prashad Mukherjee, Ram Manohar Lohia, J.B. Kripalani, A.K. Gopalan, Minu Masani, Bhupesh Gupta. They really exercised a lot of influence on the activities of the central government. This healthy development was an important contribution of Jawaharlal Nehru as the first Prime Minister of India. See, finally, we got a healthy environment, a great healthy development was there in the country. And the first and foremost, the credit we can give it to the first Prime Minister of India, that is Jawaharlal Nehru. To create a healthy development in our country, okay, to create a healthy development in our country, Yes, it was an uh, important contribution of Jawaharlal Nehru, who was the first Prime Minister of India. Okay, dear children, so I have completed chapter number 2.2, .2, that is foundation of Indian democracy. Okay, the first general election, preparation of process, results of the first general election, and impact of the elections. So please, please go through this, and I'll end up my class out here. We will just uh, catch up later. Uh, in our next classes with chapter number three that is challenges to Indian democracy. Okay, thank you very much.